Hey guys, Simtar here. Today I want to present you a little beginner's video that will help you getting started with Divinity Original Sin 2. It does not contain any character build guides or quest walkthrough tips and so on, but exactly description of everything you need to start the game, create your character and make your first steps in game, as well as some important details that may be not clear or confusing if you are new to Divinity and these types of games in overall. Let's go! So, first of all, when you are starting the game, you need to create a profile. Why you ever need a profile? Well, for example, you can have multiple walkthrough, different characters, or maybe just you want to play with a friend, and you don't want to have a huge mess of uh, game save files, because you can be easily confused, load the save you don't want it to load, and so on. For these purposes, Profiles is the best solution. So you just go here and let delete just one and create a profile. Bang! It is done. Just need to wait a few seconds. First of all, before you start the game, go to options and I strongly, besides all the graphic, audio, controls options, which are absolutely up to you, click the gameplay, scroll down to automated hotbar behavior and simply disable everything besides remove unmemorized skills. What does it mean? In game you have a hotbar for hotkeys where you can place skills, items and so on. And by default game automatically fills it with any kind of junk you will pick up. To prevent this simply leave the first options only, click apply and accept. You can change this anytime anyway. Story. Choose single player. For multiplayer, of course, choose multiplayer. It is for playing with your friends, you can join uh, one of public servers or make a line connection with your friends to explore this game together. So, now you need to choose a difficulty level. If you are not a complete, let's say, complete newcomer to RPG games at all, if you have maybe played several RPGs before, I would recommend you to go on tactician mode. Don't pick, don't pick up honor mode, because honor mode it is really hard and it's its main feature that you have only one save slot. Only one. So every time you auto save or quick save and so on, uh, game automatically Rewrite this slot. Uh, when your whole party dies on honor mod, the game is complete, finished. You cannot even load. Uh, classic and explorer mods are much more easier and once again, if you know what RPG games is, these two difficulties may be just too easy for you and too boring. So it will be up to you to choose which difficulty. But I recommend to go on Tactician to have balanced gameplay difficulty and experience the game at full power. Begin. So, first of all, you need to create a character and you can pick up one of uh, Origins or create a custom one. What is Origin? Origin character is a like pre-made character that has own storyline and uh, you will meet, you can and you will meet all the Origins character in the game later, so you can take them in your party. Uh, once again, each Origin character has its own storyline, so no matter uh, will be your party member or you will play Origin character yourself, you still will be able to complete its story. But uh, for best gameplay results, I strongly recommend, of course it is up to you, but once again I strongly recommend to create a custom character. Why it is so important for gameplay? Because uh, maximum party size is 4 members, so even if you create a custom character, 
and so you will lose one character story quest line yeah you will still have three more characters and so a lot of other character storylines but the thing is uh here you can see the right skill from this two on each character yeah uh it is a custom source skill uh source skill are the most powerful skills in the game and so the thing happened so that most of Origins custom source skills are just garbage. They are cool, they have a cool description, they have a cool, let's say, mechanics, that's true. But most of them are simply useless in a game. Maybe the only two useful skills from Origins custom source skills is the time warp of Fain because this skill actually and literally gives additional turn to any character and so it is very useful and especially in middle and late game. And the second so-so uh, useful skill is break the shackles on uh, Sibyl. All the other source skills from Origins are really useless. So if you are not planning to play as Fane or at least as Sibyl yourself, make a custom character because custom character uh, source skill is a great defensive skill called Dome of Protection. It's like a big area of effect shield that first of all restores decent amount of armor and magic armor to you and allies inside the shield and it also lasts for several turns constantly protecting your party. It is very useful on any stage of the game. Oh, and one more note, don't recommend to pick up any undead character for the first run until you're really sure on what you're doing because Undead have a reverted healing effects, so he, uh, any healing spells or potions damage Undead and poisons actually heals them. So it is, it may be, maybe, pretty tricky for a newcomer, so if you're sure what you're doing, pick the Undead. If no, don't pick it. So you can pick from one of pre-made classes or pick any class and tweak it absolutely up to your taste. Take into account that default class, whatever class you will pick, it is actually almost doesn't matter in the whole game scope. Because later, starting from Act 2 in game, there are four acts in game, and starting from Act 2, you will be able to respec all of your characters for free anytime. So, preset. Preset is a combination of your attributes, abilities and skills. Strengths, finance, intelligence, constitution, memory and wits. If you will hover on any of them, you can see what each of attributes is given to you. So it is pretty much self-explanatory as well. Abilities are passive skills that are improving your knowledge of weapon or decent schools of magic or something else. There are two types of abilities. Combat abilities that are improving your combat or magic skills and civil abilities that are improving various other skills like sneaking, uh, sievery, button for better trading, persuasion for persuading <laughs> obviously characters and so on. Civil abilities in Divinity are almost the same important as the combat abilities, because Divinity it is all about a real RPG, so the roleplay. For example, if you will have a high persuasion, you will be able to open a new dialogue lines and the whole uh, quest branches or fail quests completely. So if you will fail the quest, you will lose experience, you will lose rewards, you will lose gear, you may even lose your party member in the quest, and persuasion may play a big role in it. In skills, you are choosing base pack of skills that you will receive based on your abilities chosen. So each type of skill is binded to some type of ability. So for example, Ricochet and Elemental Arrowheads are binded to Huntsman skill. Peace of Mind is binded to Pyrokinetic skill, and so on. Talents are very powerful passive skills, so that's why you're receiving them not each level, but each several levels. 
Some talents are requiring decent amount of skills or decent level to be able to pick them because they are really powerful or for example some talents are incompatible with other talents so it is always a good idea to read the description of course. Tags are determining type of your character, of your hero. In reality of gameplay, tags are sometimes determining the amount of dialogue lines you can have, the special dialogue lines and so on. And so, tags are besides of your overall like uh, voice acting of your character and different replicas, tags can have a direct influence on your gameplay because they can help you or cannot help you to pass some kind of dialogues and quest lines. Jester, I'm always speaking Jester, and you know, Noble, for example. Instruments. Instruments are not affecting on your gameplay, like, at all. That's just a type of background music that sometimes playing in the game in the cutscenes. Pick any you like. Also, as you can see, I picked up Dwarf for Ranger class. Actually, it is not the best uh, race for Dwarf, because each race are also having two passive talents, like two default talents, and it is a good idea to read description of these talents. For example, just for example, Dwarf's starter talent gives you 10% maximum vitality, so 10% maximum health and plus 5% dodging. If you will sing just a bit, you realize that Dwarf is great for Warrior, because dodging and max health are better for tankiness, or for example for dual wielding rogue, because rogues are good in dodging and additional dodge chance will be always good for them, and so on. So just read the racial talent descriptions to pick up the best race that will fit your class. So it, it wasn't a dream after all. No, it wasn't. So, just a few basic scenes. In the bottom panel you can see all your panels. Inventory panel, skill panel, crafting panel, world map panel, journal and toggle actions. So, as you can see there is a little letter near each panel that is actually a hotkey for this panel. Like, you press I, you open inventory, you press, you press K, you open skills and so on. So here you can place skills, actions, items, basically anything you want. And then you can access them pressing the hotkey or pressing them by the mouse. To be able to reorganize your hotbar, unlock it, press this little lock button. So you see when it's locked, I can't move them. When it's unlocked, you can move, sort, organize, well, and so on. So you can see there are five hold bars and they are really long, so don't worry, that will be enough for any amount of skills and items. When the dialogue line is highlighted with some kind of text in brackets, that means that is additional special dialogue line that is appearing only when it is fitting your uh, tag, like noble or jester as you can see, or for example if you have high enough persuasion skill. Not all characters uh, have really useful items to sell, but at any character dialogue screen you can see this little hand with the coins icon, that means trade. So just click on it and see the trading inventory. Once again, Divinity is a real roleplay game, so everything you do can have consequences. You can easily see if your actions can be spotted or no by pressing left shift. When you're pressing left shift, you can see like areas of views of NPCs and be sure that you are detected or not detected in this area. Don't forget to pick up all possible bedrolls which you can find here if you don't want to waste healing potions on healing after battle because after battle uh, your health is not restored automatically so to restore you need to sleep. 
be sure to pick up the bad rolls. Game is teaching you to be attentive from the literally very first minute. For example, you can see the door here, which is locked, and there are decent amount of pleasant stuff there, like poison, potions, some food, which will be very useful to you in the beginning of the game, but you can't open it. Here comes the, another very useful tool. If you will press left alt, left alt on the keyboard, it will highlight the nearby items you can pick up. You press alt and oh, greasy key. Pick up the key and bam, we have opened the storage room. I will not do this in this like uh, beginner intro scene, but be sure to talk with everyone because talking in Divinity is the same important aspect of the game as fighting. Now there is a pretty important moment that I want to highlight, let's say so. So after you will trigger this little event, scripted event, you can find your base, let's say basic equipment in this chest. So don't forget to loot it. Equipment type you can find in this chest is binded to your class. What is tricky here? If you are an experienced player and want to tweak your starter class yourself, choose all the skills, abilities, talents and so on. You of course can do this, but the items in that chest are binded to your basic class and nothing more. So, for example, you have chosen the cleric build, which as you can see uses shield and hammer, but somehow, well just somehow, yeah, you will tweak this class to be, let's say, more aggressive and less tankiness and so, yeah, I don't know, you will play as a cleric with dual wheel daggers. That is, by the way, absolutely possible in Divinity. The class building system is very flexible. So let's say you will pick up appropriate attributes, skills, abilities, talents and so on to be like rogue cleric, yeah? But the scene is, no matter which uh, build you will make for your class uh, after all, the items will still be binded to your cleric default class and so even if you will pick all your skills and attributes to be good with dual wielding daggers, you will still find an axe and a shield here. If you want to tweak uh, your starter class, pick up the class that will meet, uh, let's say, your skills and future weapon choices. To not uh, appear in a wired situation when uh, you will find starter items which will not fit your class at all. One more useful tip which not all players are aware about even after like finishing the whole game. Almost all objects in the game are destructible. So, for example, if you want to get here and want to open this door but it's locked and you don't have the key and you don't have enough lockpicking skill, you can just destroy it. Press left control left control and then attack the object. Bang, we have broken the door. Combat in Divinity is very, very tactical wise and you really need to think what your next move will be. Another good advice to combat is to prepare yourself as good as possible before you will start uh, the fight actually. For example, many buffs are acting several turns for you, so to not spend your action points, this, uh, by the way, these green dots, green circles uh, near the skill name, mean how many action points each turn you will spend to make this skill. So you can and you should Simply buff the supporting spells on you before engaging the combat to not waste the action points in actual combat, like that. Boom! As you also can see, 
uh, here is a status area of our character where you can see all buffs, debuffs, curses and so on that are currently active on the character. This little digit in the bottom right corner means how many turns left before this buff or debuff will fade off from you. When you are in a dialogue you can see that timer of buffs and debuffs is paused, so you don't need to worry, it will fade off until you finish dialogue. Combat is uh, based on the turns, you make the turn, then your enemy make the turn and so on. The order of your and enemy turns you can see here at the middle top of the screen. By the way, if you have not spent uh, some of your action point this turn, don't be afraid to end turn and this amount of unspent action points will be added to your next turn. So as you can see we now have 6 action points instead of basic 4. Ben, we have finished him. One more scene to mention once again. Almost all objects in this game are interactable. That means you can move the chest to you to open it, you can grab and drop water barrel on fire source to not get burned and clear your path, you can even block passage of enemies to your character by objects, explode gas with fire or drop objects on enemies heads using telekinesis powers. So remember about that. Game also has inbuilt mod support, as well as simple and useful load order sorting tool. Original Scene 2 modding community is quite active as well, but if you want to know more about best mods for it, be sure to check my upcoming video exactly about the mods. That's it for now folks, thank you for watching and I hope you found some useful tips for starting to play this amazing game. Be sure to enable channel notifications and join our Discord to have gaming and modding chatting and advices. Scimitar Gaming here, signing out.